Today's question on art discourse is going to be, how do you know if what you're creating is actually good or just a total piece of garbage? <laughs> oh, this is such a sincere question. So oh. how do you know if what you're creating is actually good or if it's just a total piece of garbage? Hello, it's me again. What's your gut say? Okay, my gut, my gut went to art is subjective, so that's not actually a very easy question to answer because I feel like being an abstract painter, maybe I'm more sensitive to this question because I feel like there's lots of people that think what I do is absolute garbage, but I don't feel like it's garbage. Like personally, I, I really like what I do. Okay. Um, so... But I think like, okay, so like I, I know that I am not good at because it's not a skill that I've invested time in doing like portraiture of like a live model. Like, like I know that, that that's not a skill that I've honed. Yeah. Um, and so without anybody actually having to tell me, I can look at it at a drawing that I've done of a of a life model, okay, and say this is a total objectively garbage. not good. Um, it's not the worst, no, but it's definitely not the best. And so it's it's tough, right? Because I feel like my brain goes to those reality talent shows where somebody where the the producers or whoever makes the shows just they like bank on the viewership of watching somebody sing poorly but be really blind to their inability to sing oh because that's and, like tv gold yeah and it, it really it just crushes me um and I, that's where my brain went to with this question so i think that uh there is a complexity to this question that we will not be able to answer in our 15 minute hour <laughs> discourse. But I think that when you are creating and you are the creator of that, there is definitely a gut feeling that you have when the composition uh, begins to take shape. If that's like a writing or if that's a musical piece or a visual artwork or a digital artwork, like whatever it is, there is something in your body that will say, yes, this is like good. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's like a bit of a difficulty when it comes to kind of like sometimes expanding the bounds of what is considered art as that as you push away from those normal seats like I'm going to make a portrait that portrait's going to be the most realistic thing that I can paint like that's that will be subjectively I guess good but as you move away from that and you move into like the avant-garde into the new the closer you get to creating something new, the less certain you are of whether it's good or not because mm -hmm. you there's no precedent. When you create something new, there's no precedent of it being good or bad. And I think that, that sometimes is like where it can be very difficult. Like as you push the boundaries of creating and exploring and uh, you you have you have no real barometer of what's going to be good. Because I think that you, as an abstract artist, probably feel this a lot. That as you're making things, you're like, I don't know. It's new. It's like, this mm -hmm. hasn't been done before. It's not a portrait of a friend of mine. It is a bunch of marks and shapes and things interacting with one another. Mm -hmm. And I think that that can be a very hard place to sit in. Yeah. I think that, you know, if we look at this at its face value of like, maybe somebody that has applied to a lot and is just really not getting anywhere, seeing a ton of rejections. I think sometimes you're just gonna have to really ask some people that you trust that, that aren't gonna lie to you and say, is this good? This is what my goal is. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to achieve a perfectly realistic landscape. Here's my photo. I want it to look like the photo. 
Um, and you, you know, and hopefully people around you can say, no, it's not working. Like the colors aren't right or your, you know, composition is weird or your perspective is off or whatever it is. Um, for, for me, I have to trust people to tell me whether or not like the work just looks bad and you know, my colors look okay. bad or there's, you know, sometimes I'll show things to Kyle and he'll be like, oh, there's too many shapes of the same size. It's not working. Uh, I say it exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it, it's a difficult one because I think good relies on quality, skill. It relies on the viewer, whoever's looking at it, what their like preconceived notions of what makes good art is. Mm -hmm. um, I think like the essence of it is like uh, you as yourself in their own little studio vacuum as you're making things. Uh, I experience this when I'm making prints that I have to ask myself kind of those hard questions or when I start kind of concerned like just questioning what I'm making and I get like I get an intuitive gut feeling especially sometimes like say mixing color like is this the right color and like my gut says like no it's not but then like the rest of me is like I don't want to spend two hours mixing more color but I think like often like you have to kind of trust that intuition and you will find that moment where you're like, okay, the artwork is done or it is good for your own self. And I think that it's only you that you really need to please when you're making artwork. That's not true. There's commissions and that's a whole other conversation. But like when you're making artwork and that freedom of your own studio for your own self, not for like anything else, I think that you have to kind of trust that gut. Yeah. And I think also just like, I've been reading a lot of different, um, not how-to guides, but like, uh, how would you describe them? Like self-help for creatives, because I've, I'm wondering how I can feed them into maybe these conversations. And a lot of it, it talks just about dedication and practice. And it's like, it, as hokey and as like eye rolly obvious as that is, it's true it, you know if you're gonna get if you want your work to move from potentially garbage to great if you don't devote any time to making that shift then it's it's probably not going to happen i think the hard thing in the arts is it's not clear cut like say sports you know if you want to play sports i feel like i use sports a lot <laughs> but it's because it's I just love like, that you've like never really watched sports i never i don't play sports i don't watch sports but i do think that it's like it's something people generally understand. Yeah. I think that there's like a very clear line of like, you are good or you're not good, or you're good for this role. You know, if you want to, oh, if you want to be a pitcher and you can't throw fast enough, it doesn't really matter if you're good, a good pitcher, you need to be good in that space. All right. Chrissy and Kyle talk sports on our <laughs> discourse. Do you feel that like within the art world, like this question of like, is this just totally a piece of garbage? Like within sports, there is regionals. There's like international, there's like local levels. Like there's different kind of like leagues. Oh yeah, leagues, I guess that's what it's called. Like, do you feel like there might be a parallel to being like an artist? Like, okay, perhaps you aren't the artist that can like make the crazy, unbelievable blockbuster kind of like artwork but you know maybe you're like that regional artist where like you're kind of like you're good or maybe we talk about this in music sense you're not like the weird savant like piano player uh, and you're not like a heavy rock star but like you play bars every friday night right there's like i think the hard thing about the, these, but... i mean this probably goes for sports too sorry if anybody watches sports <laughs> or is an athlete and they're listening to this and they're we're just doing we're really missing the mark um because i think it the art world also relies so heavily on kind of luck in a lot of ways like sort of sports i think i probably yeah i you know i i think there's probably people playing in bars that are that should be rock stars pop stars celebrity but they, they just the, the wrong person you know they just haven't had the right person to walk through the bar so, are we answering this question? <laughs> How do you know if your work is good? I, maybe, the, maybe it's more, why does that matter? Like, good for who and good for what? 
Is it is it garbage for wear? If you know, like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, if you're if you want if you're making digital illustrations and you are hoping to, uh, you know, sell those to Pixar or something, then like, yeah, do you think that they're as good as what you're seeing in animation studio make? You know, then you have a bar to sort of gauge yourself on. Oh, so you're talking about comparisons. So like, I guess I don't know. This is a this is a hard. It's a really good question. I don't, what determines hard... the quality of good would be based upon like what you're deeming as like good yourself, right? So like if you if you never listened to music and you have never played music or have never experienced music you would have no idea of what of like if somebody played music for you you'd have no barometer of whether it's good or bad i guess then you go back to your gut does it feel right yeah, i guess that's true <laughs> this is such a hard question i guess like, i really you're... can't wait to see what other people think about this if you want to like know whether or not your artwork is good or bad, perhaps looking at your peers and looking at like other people, like whatever league you want to play in, so to speak, we'll keep that sports metaphor around. <laughs> like whatever that league is, look at the people within that space and then I guess compar comparatively, how does your artwork stack up against their artwork? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not fair if like, it's not fair to you if like all of those people in your league are like making landscapes paintings and you're making portraitures. So like make sure that like well, whatever I mean, you're looking at is like a relative comparison to like, what you're making. I like, guess, but if you want to step out of your league, like say you're writing uh, short stories and you want them to be published in a certain publication, then start reading the short stories of the people that are being published in that publication. And, um, you know, do you feel like your work is, is at the same level? Um, and if not, what, like, where is it lacking and how can you adjust? Or if it, it is, but it's different, then that I think can be a really interesting place too. It, this is why it's hard to answer that question in the arts because so many artists that we just feel passionate about now were making work that at the time did seem like garbage <laughs> or sometimes was literal garbage and but it was the questions that they were posing it was the way they were pushing it back against institutions it was you know that challenging of the norm that made the work interesting after the fact and so that's kind of an uncomfortable question to answer because I think I automatically go to thinking about um, you know somebody that's trying to do realism and you know then you have a very clear definition of does it look real is your perspective looking good are your colors matching you know is the scale yeah. accurate well, then like you have barometers right mm -hmm. you can say the perspective is good or bad because it emulates the reality versus the non-reality yeah of it. but i do think that it gets a lot grayer once you start moving away from those standardized like things and you move in towards going towards things that are new yeah where there are no barometers and there are no comparisons yeah so that was a very challenging question. Your art's not a total piece of garbage. Um, just want to reaffirm that for you. I don't know. I guess like I feel like there's a space for a lot of different things. And if it feels good to make and it feels right for you to be making it. Keep making it. Keep making it and keep trying and, and keep asking questions. And be open to feedback. Be open to criticism as long as it's not just that's garbage. Or if every single person is telling you that your work is garbage, maybe it is. And that's okay. Try something different, you know? Maybe that's not the right advice. <laughs> Keep practicing, I guess, is the simplest, uh, the simplest advice to give. But like, if you are constantly making things that you don't feel good about, change them because there's no reason to be investing all of your time into making stuff that doesn't make you feel good. Yeah. And if you find that like every time you're kind of answering these, asking yourself this question and you're like worrying about the quality of your artwork, 
Mm, like, I think there are some circumstances where, like, you look at your piece and you're like, yes, this is junk, and you put it off to the side and you move on. Yeah. And that's okay. Paint over it. Erase it. Just get a new canvas. It's easier yeah. than painting over it. Anyway, we hope that that was at least interesting to listen to. And let us know what you think. I mean, I feel like there probably isn't a single person that hasn't at some point in the history of their making thought, yeah. this is garbage. If you're one of those, how did you overcome that thought? Or how are you still overcoming that thought? Um, how do you, sh yeah, how do you shift into saying like, oh, less garbage now, more good. And in, in your own practice, like how do you kind of like determine the things that are worthwhile and good to continue making? Mm -hmm. And is it like based upon like a feeling? Is it based upon just like confidence? And like how do you in your own work determine what is good and bad for your own practice? We look forward to hearing from you. See Bye you next everybody. Time. If you enjoyed this video, could you do two things for me? Could you like it? And could you subscribe to our channel? Both of these things help us out tremendously. A big shout out to all of our patrons. Your continued support is amazing and we really appreciate the encouragement to continue making these videos. If you want to become a patron, you can see the link below in the description.